Hey, hello, hello. This is Gerald Salenti, and boy, what a day today is. A day that will be remembered in history, yep. C-N-A-N-D-N. Salenti and Judge Napolitano. Yeah, and this is the honest truth, the truth. Not the CNN fake stuff, but this is CNN, Salenti and Napolitano. Napolitano, I got to say Napolitano because Napolitano is Napolitano. And this is the truth, the honest truth, because all we're being fed are streams of lies, moronic nonsense. Like when you look at CNN, the headlines, uh, a guy uh, and his wife got uh, thrown out of a restaurant because they were wearing masks. That was the front page of CNN. And the other one about this young lady that's missing. You know, it's terrible that she's missing, but 21,000 murders last year in the United States, according to Vox. Why am I hearing this is the one story? So what we're doing is we're giving you the information, the facts, and the data that are important to our lives that CNN, the cartoon news network, is, is keeping quiet while they're selling fear and hysteria and C and N is the honest truth. Judge <laughs> Napolitano. Gerald, it's always, it's always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you uh, for that introduction. Your, your observations about this young girl who now has been found dead uh, show the power of the media. The country fixated on one missing person out of 90,000 missing Americans uh, every year because the media just decided this was the this was the most titillating one and it dominated the news for 10 days and it probably will continue to dominate until they find her fiance whether he's involved in her death or not once they find him then it'll go below the radar but you shows the power yeah this, I'll tell you when it began to decline I was being interviewed by remember 48 hours on on CBS sure was, yeah they came up when I was in Rhinebeck and they were, they were doing a show with me. And I said to the, the woman, and she was very, I forgot her name, but she was really, really sharp uh, reporter, journalist, a real journalist. And I said, why are they covering this, um, uh, uh, who was that guy, that, that f uh, football guy? Um, it was in the news all the time. Uh, who was it? <sighs> oh, just threw a blank. I knew his face. What was his name? O.J. Simpson? O.J. Simpson. That's when it began to go down. Uh. What the hell do I... O.J. Simpson, O.J. Simpson, O.J. Simpson. That <laughs> was the beginning of the death of it. You know, I'm laughing because... And I know this is not what we planned on talking about. I almost owe my 25-year television career to O.J. Simpson because Roger Ailes, when he was the head of CNBC hired me expressly to analyze that trial. Oh, and I did it five days a week for 13 months. All right, I got to tell you. <laughs> Funny. Oh, yeah. Boy. So on, on the important notes that we're talking, and again, this is very important because, you know, CNN, again, we wrote about it in the Trends Journal back in February of 2020, that little clown boy running the show over there, Zucker, or maybe you take that Z out and throw an F in there. This is the guy that told his staff to keep going on with the coronavirus because their ratings were going up. Their ratings were in the toilet. They had hardly anybody tuning in before then. And they did. And they kept selling fear and hysteria. And the fear and hysteria keeps being sold. And of course, now the government is in full control of selling the fear and hysteria. And you wrote an article uh, yesterday uh, that has been put out about what Biden has done in his mandates of telling corporations, private enterprises, that if, hey, listen, if you got 100 employees or more, they got to get vaxxed or they can't go to work. Is this America? Well, for the first problem is in America... We have a constitution 
And the Constitution has been interpreted by the Supreme Court to say we, we control what goes in our bodies. Just as a sick and dying person can refuse medication, a healthy person can decline medication, particularly an experimental vaccine, which is basically what this is. But the president who is scrambling for some sort of a success, he's had a foreign policy disaster. His own party is fighting amongst themselves in the Congress. He's scrambling for a domestic success, has decided since the Congress won't enact legislation forcing us to be vaccinated because there's no political will for that in the Congress and they don't have the authority to do it anyway, he'll do it. And so he issued a, a regulation, told the Department of Labor to tell every employer, you're quite correct, Gerald, who employs more than 100 people, if your people aren't vaccinated, we will fine you. There'll be no trial. We're the judge and jury. We will fine you $14,000 a day per day, per unvaccinated employee. So can the government force private enterprise to enforce its own regulations when the president writes the regulations, not the Congress? The short answer to that is no, which is why the regulations were announced by the president two and a half weeks ago, Gerald, they have yet to be written and they've yet to be promulgated because lawyers in the DOJ are probably telling lawyers in the White House, he can't do this. So we're waiting to see what these regulations say. When the president announced them, he said, this is not about civil liberties or personal freedom. It sure as heck is when the government wants to force vaccinate you against your will. You know, you also mentioned about the 13th Amendment and it prohibits involuntary servitude. Ah, it doesn't prohibit voluntary servitude. And when we voluntarily comply with these unconstitutional, immoral mandates of the government, like you shall enforce our regulation, you shall intrude onto your employees' privacy, you shall force your employees to get vaccinated, that is forcing a private employer, say a mom and pop organization, that employs more than 100 people to work for the government against its will and without compensation. Now, what do you call that when the government forces you to work for it against your will and without compensation? Slavery. Slavery. And slavery, they call it involuntary servitude because they didn't want to use the word slavery in the Constitution. Slavery is prohibited by the 13th Amendment. But voluntary servitude is not. And if we cow to the government, and do what it tells us when we know it lacks the authority to do it, when it interferes with our business judgment as to how to use assets that we've raised to sell a service or a product or a good. We become voluntary slaves to the government. That's the danger. That's where we're heading, Gerald. That's my greatest fear. Well, I agree with you. You know what I say? All we've become is plantation workers on the global plantation of slave landia. Yes. I mean, yes. remember when you and I were young guys, there were things called grocery stores, hardware stores, stationery stores. Right. Bakeries. Now they're chains. Yes. Because as you well know, they did away with the Robinson Patman Act, Sherman Antitrust Act, Clayton Antitrust Act, Rob, the, you know, the, all of them. And they allow the bigs to take over. And Every because... time I go into one of these stores, my heart breaks when I see these people working there because they have no future. Right. I go to a Hannaford's, you know, and, and I go to a, I go to a, a Lowe's or a Home Depot or a, and you see the people working there. They have no future. In the old days, when you worked at the grocery store, the, the hardware store, the stationery store, you say to yourself as a young guy, hey, you know, maybe I'm going to learn over here and I'm going to open my own place. Correct. Correct. No I mean, the other reason that, that all this has happened is is the Federal Reserve printing cash and, and devaluing everything that we own. And so you could no longer make a living selling groceries or, or selling baked goods or selling stationery. And the big guys bought you up for less than you were worth. That's, that's where we are today. This is not a Democrat problem or a Republican problem. This is a big government problem. Yep. This is a problem of Leviathan, a government that knows no restraints on itself and wants to tell us how to live, 
also a government of cronyism a government that wants to take care of its patrons, the little guys, and the Constitution be damned. Yeah, it's you look at merger and acquisition activity, it's at an all-time high and because yes. they're getting all this cheap money and the bigs are getting bigger and buying out everybody. Correct. So going Correct. back to servitude and, and slavery, all we are, are are plantation workers of slave landia. Well, it gets and, even worse. If the Democrats, well, I don't know that this will pass because... There are some stable thinkers in the Senate, very few, but enough to block it. The, the proposal of the House Ways and Means Committee to raise taxes will, for people like you and me that live in New York and New Jersey, have an effective tax rate of north of 60 percent. Now, oh. if that's not slavery, I don't know what is. Yeah. And again, you saw what happened under Trump. He gave 82 percent of his tax breaks went to the one percent. Correct. Correct. My taxes actually went up because they get rid of the deduction on state and local taxes. And in New Jersey, we have the highest state and local taxes in the union. So I have to pay a tax on the tax, which is inconceivable. Could you imagine what Jefferson or Madison would have thought about that? Yeah, this is this. Is, you know, you also in your in your um, article, you wrote all this can happen. Can happen only if we let it. If, We're letting it happen. Yeah. We're letting, We're letting it, happen. it happen. Look, what, if they, to, what can we do to change this? Well, if the feds go to Walmart and, and threaten Walmart, you know, half a million employees, it's not going to put Walmart out of business. But if the feds go to some, some business two miles from me or two miles from you, a hardworking person like you are, who happens to have 150 employees, and they start second guessing his business judgment, well, you can't have that person uh, work. You can't have that person work. It'll have a, a, a catastrophic, catastrophic uh, economic effect on the business and a catastrophic personal effect on the individual who can't work. I mean, $14,000 a day per day per employee. No jury trial. Forget about due process. The Department of Labor will just come and take $14,000 per employee per day after you reveal their private medical information to us out of your bank account. I mean, this is Joe Stalin's dream that Joe Biden could have this kind of power over private enterprise. Now, why doesn't the government enforce this regulation itself? Well, the Congress would have to authorize it, and there's no will in the Congress for it. And the government would have to pay this, it's pay for this itself. And there's no will in the government, there's no ability in the government to enforce this. So they're trying to get private enterprise to enforce a presidential dictate. It's not even a statute written into law. And this isn't being talked about as you're speaking about it. No, it's no not one's saying this. It's, it's not being talked about. What's, no. what's being talked about is the death rate, the sickness rate, the effectiveness of the vaccine. And uh, as our friend uh, RFK Jr. said at a conference that you and I attended recently, the gross demonization of the unvaccinated. The unvaccinated are heroes because they're basically saying to the government, stop, leave me alone. Yeah. Again, uh, you know, uh, again, you and I, I was it was such an honor to be speaking at um, a Dr. Ron Paul's War on Us event. And uh, it was a great it was a great gathering. You, oh, what you brought the people. house down. Congressman Thomas Massey did. Bobby Kennedy did it. Uh, Jeff Dice did. It was a great, uh, great gathering. There needs to be more gatherings like that. You asked what we can do. People need to learn what their rights are. They need to know when they can say to the government, you shall not pass across the threshold of my house or my business or my bank account. And then we need to begin sort of a soft secession. We need government, we need government power to stop flowing from local and state to the feds and start flowing from the feds to local and state or start dissipating. All of government has too much power, power to regulate our lives. The, the states are no angels but at least the states are closer to us and we have more of an opportunity to influence what the states do. Federal bureaucracy of 3 million people, Donald Trump couldn't tame it, nobody will tame it. Yeah, but you talk about the states, look at the state of New York, Ovi. I can't, you know, we went out to dinner 
uh, 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 last week, and I had to, we had to sit outside. I had to sit outside because I'm not vaccinated. Correct. Because you exercised a right that the Supreme Court has recognized under the Constitution, we had to sit outside. Turned out to be a lovely venue and a lovely dinner, but oh, that's yeah, not the point. It was a wonderful time. It was great sitting outside. That's one right. of the good things that happened, by right. the way. Right. But, but the, yeah, point is, like, the point is you and I, <clears throat> at that moment in our lives, in the middle of the richest city in the world, two very healthy people did not have the opportunity to exercise free choice and neither did the restaurant tour. Yeah. Because if he let us eat inside and didn't check you for your vaccine status, guess what they'll do to him? They'll take his liquor license and if he can't sell alcohol, he can't pay his rent. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's bigger than federal, it's state as well. Correct. And Correct. we're losing our freedom. Here's my, this is my suggestion. Let me hear it. How did the Berlin Wall come down? Hmm. The Berlin the people Wall came, came down the people because came people, came people got, people got sick leave. and tired of it. The president of the United States said, tear down that wall, Mr. Gorbachev. And eventually the public ripped it down. That's right. Not the government, the public. The public. The people came out. They stayed and they didn't leave. More right. people came. Right. They stayed and they didn't leave. Right. More people came. They right. stayed and they didn't leave. Right. You can't go on these. You know, I, I was speaking at a, one of the rallies, the man against uh, uh, what, what de Blasio, Warren Wilhelm Jr. Yeah, really a junior, junior little piece of crap when he put these mandates on. I was at Columbus Circle, one of the speakers, only about two, 3,000 people turned out out of 8.3 million. I know, now, but Gerald, that's a good number for New York City, two or 3,000. Well, when they have, like, this is the story and why I think we have to go and not leave. Back in 1982, I'll never forget it, there was a protest rally in um, Central Park against nuclear arms. Almost a million people turned out. A million. And then Caspar Weinberger, yeah, the, the criminal with the uh, Iran-Contra thing that, oh, you get a free ride because you're a member of the club. Yeah, that Caspar Weinberger, uh, uh, who, who really pushed the nuclear movement as the defense secretary under Reagan, he's quoted as saying, these aren't his exact words, after the rally. Yeah, it was a very impressive rally. And we watch, you know, but after it's over, it really doesn't make any difference. We're still going to do what we want. That's because they stayed in one home. If they stayed and you didn't got leave, it. You like, they got did, it. like they did in Berlin, the government's hand would be forced. Yes. And to me, that's what we have to do. We all have to get together, surround, like, for example, City Hall in New York, and say, little de Blasio, you're not coming out until you do what we tell you to do. You little boy that never worked a day in your life, that's been sucking off the public tit, you forgot two words. They all forgot these two words. Public servant. Right. Does the you, government work for us or do we work for the government? If we asked that question 100 years ago, it would be laughable. Today, we all know the answer. The government treats us as if we work for it. And what does the Declaration of Independence say? We have the inalienable right to pursue life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And the Constitution says they can't take life, liberty, or property away from us without a jury trial at which they prove fault, not a dictate from the president or a governor or a mayor. Why do these things happen? Because we don't show up and stay. We show up and leave or we don't show up at all. Stated differently, these things happen because we let them happen, Gerald. And I'm saying we are in the fight for our lives. And as you well know, you know, I'm doing everything and you're doing everything you can. I hold these rallies up in Kingston and you graciously speak at them. But the rally is over and the day is finished. And people we have don't. to do something. And to me, and as you know, when I gave the talk and it's happening now, at Ron Paul's, I started crying because my business, I'm a visionary and I see the future. 
And this isn't my kind of America. I'm heartbroken. So, well, it is it is heartbreaking what the government, Republicans and Democrats, uh, have done to us. And I see the future, too, and it's a very dark one. I don't even want to say everything that I see. But I do see that at some point the government will not be able to pay its bills anymore and the federal government will go out of business. That'll be a very good thing. And the country will break apart into smaller uh, republics. Now, you don't want to live in the Northeast if that happens because it'll be even worse than it is now. You know, my dear friend, Thomas Naylor, may rest in peace. He started, wonderful man. He was a, you know, a professor emeritus at Duke University. He's a really a brilliant guy. He started the Second Vermont Republic back in, uh, in, in early 2000s. He passed away in 2012. My life hasn't been the same since he passed on. And he was fighting for secessionism. And it was starting to really gain momentum. And, and that's what we really need in some ways. But... Again, if we don't do something now, we're finished. Yes. You know, you mentioned Vermont. It's very interesting. When Vermont and Texas joined the union, obviously, when every state joins the union, there's legislation uh, setting forth in writing the terms under which it joins. Vermont and Texas insisted upon and got from the Congress the right to leave. Texas got the right to to leave or to stay and break up into five states. Wow. Imagine 10 libertarian senators coming from Texas to Washington, D.C. would drive Chuck Schumer and that crowd crazy. Well, then, of course, unless they're Thomas Massey or Ron Paul, they're going to get co-opted and and seduced by the power that's there. The only remedy is secession and nullification, leaving the government or basically saying this law doesn't apply here because we don't uh, consent to it and you violated the constitution. Texas did that with abortion and the Supreme Court let them do it. Yeah, this state, yeah. You know, the other thing too, as you mentioned, yeah, they get sold out. As I say, that it's, it's, a, it's not the government anymore, it's a crime syndicate. Yes. The banksters, yes. look it's, at, they're too big to fail. After they ruin everybody, all the you know, subprime mortgages, all the dirty deals that they do. Look at that little low-life J.P. Morgan Chase rigging the precious metals market. Convicted of fraud five times. Slap on the wrist, but prosecution to the fullest for us, the little people of Slavelandia. Right. Number two, drug dealers are running the country. Morons and imbeciles call them Big Pharma. Yes. Number three, the military industrial complex. You don't have to believe me. Dwight D. Eisenhower, five star general, Supreme Commander of the Allied Forces, yes. two term Republican president, warning us on January 17, 1961, that the military industrial complex is robbing the nation of the genius of the scientists, threat of the laborers, and the future of the children. And number four now, big tech. I will tell you what you can say, I will tell you what you can do. I am in charge. That's Judge- the uh, that's the America that we have today. It didn't happen overnight. It happened slowly uh, and inexorably. The government is a criminal gang that just calls itself uh, the government. You got it. Um, secession, ignoring the government, or another Berlin Wall. I speak metaphorically. Yep. I'm not advocating violence. That's mine. I am advocating civil disobedience. Oh, wait, yeah, it's not. It's, I would call it civil obedience. Yeah. Obedience it, we're are, we're yes. obedient. They are. They are disobedient. These little low lives that are robbing us of our freedom, peace, and justice. Look, you mentioned the inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Happiness has become a dirty word. Yes, yes. So why aren't there more Thomas Massey's or Ron Paul's in the government? Because these people that get in there, Congressman Massey, former Congressman uh, Paul are the exceptions, get seduced by power. They, They love to tell other people how to live. Even conservative Republicans, even Reaganites, love to tell other people how to live. And when they tell you and me and the people watching and listening to us now how to live, they're no better than Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. It's just a different 
different lifestyle that yep. they're commanding, but yep. they're usurping our liberty. They're taking our property and telling us what to do with it. And we never authorized that. The Constitution has become a joke. It exists on paper, but as an instrument to restrain the government, it has been a dismal, abominable, unconditional failure. Hey, yep. You know, about you said they want us to, we have to follow their orders. We have to do what they want us to do. We can't be ourselves. Right. You know, when I was a little kid, my father made his soul rest in peace. You know, you get in a fight with your father. He said to me, you little bastard, you think I'm telling you what I'm telling you because I want you to be like me? I want you to become yourself. That's, That's prohibited now. Yeah. You're not allowed to be yourself. You will do what I tell you to do. Right, right. That's 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 where we are, my dear friend. So you and I have to keep talking and many, many other people have to keep talking. And the people that watch and listen to us and that like uh, our words have to keep writing and talking among themselves. The people yep. that brought down the Berlin Wall were not the academics and the intellectuals. They you were the it. ordinary, everyday Germans. There were a lot of Americans there. Germans who had had enough. And the almighty Soviet Union and the German, uh, East German Stasi couldn't, couldn't stop them. That's right. And that's what we have to do. We have to unite. Thank you very much, Judge Andrew Napolitano. Thank Napolitano. you very much, my, my uh, mentor, <laughs> Gerald Salenti. What uh, a pleasure. All the best to you. Okay, we'll be back soon. You Thank you for it. tuning in, everyone.